So here's the thing. Literacy is a bad word. Unfortunately, we are nothing without it. Achieving 100% literacy is the number one solution to creating a sustainable world. Almost every country is investing in adult literacy programming. Programming dedicated to perfecting the sentence in use, structure, and style. 84% of the world is considered literate. But almost 50% of that number is struggling with low literacy. That's more than half the population knowing what a sentence is, but barely understanding it. So if the solution is literacy, then why don't the literate understand? We're not reading enough. See, reading is the difference between low literacy and high literacy. Reading is the difference between the world we have and the world we could have. So if we want to tackle poverty or the economic crisis or increase employability, community building, the active creation of a better Toronto, a better Canada, a better world, we need to do more reading. Reading turns the mechanics of literacy into comprehension, critical thinking, and communication. Now, that doesn't mean that we need to start opening reading schools. But what it does mean is that we need to start taking advantage of the human connection with books. See, literacy and reading, like everything else, is social. It depends on what a person needs at a specific point in time. It isn't something you have or you don't have. It's something you develop and adopt. My grandmother uh, is the person that inspires me most. And she always does two things, the daily crossword and she reads. When I was a kid, to connect with her, I would read the same books that she read in the evenings on the patio at night. And the next day, I'd go to her ready to quiz her with questions. Questions about character, questions about stories, questions about why suspense thrillers over science fiction, why this author instead of that author. And what I realized is we're having conversations and I was learning from them. Unfortunately, as I got older, I did less reading. I was becoming a busy adult. And I wasn't the only one. See, 33% of us never read again after we leave college. 80% of us didn't buy a book last year. 70% of us haven't been in a bookstore in five years. Fast forward to 2010, when I moved to Toronto to pursue my master's in creative writing, to find myself, a self-proclaimed reader, terrified by the length of the reading list. When do I write was the question I asked myself. Nevertheless, every lecturer, every guest speaker, every author said the same thing. If you want to be a better writer, you need to do more reading. In my second semester of being inundated with reading, I get this opportunity to facilitate reading circles with underprivileged young moms in underserved communities in Toronto. Now the idea of the reading circle is completely foreign to me. And to be honest, I thought it was kind of silly. Nevertheless, I had a plan. I was going to enter the room with a nice inspirational speech and be reading just like that. My speech went something like this. In a reading circle, we read together. We write, we talk, we grow. I only have one request of each of you, that you read at least one page by the end of the program. My speech is greeted with silence. But then a voice in the back of the room says, but miss, we're illiterate, so all we're going to do is. Now, I recognize her Jamaican dialect, and what she's saying is, we're illiterate. We can't do this. That pronouncement unites them. It's 12 against 1. I say, let's try it and see how it goes. So for the next few weeks, I'm the only one reading, and I'm exhausted. So I decide to shift to traditional literacy and focus more on writing. But every week, literacy kept coming up. At least one woman said, I'm illiterate. So I decided to ask why. It's what their teachers told them. It's what their parents told them. It's what their families told them. 
It's what their social workers told them. And they believed it. So we started reading more and writing less. I shared my personal experience with reading. We talked, we bonded. We took those characters off those pages and we took them into Jane and Finch, Regent Park, downtown Toronto, the annex. We made them figure out housing and open bank accounts. We questioned whether or not we'd be friends with them. And we found that sometimes we knew them. See, this amazing thing started to happen. Their comprehension improved. Their critical thinking improved. Their communication improved. Their literacy levels improved. But most importantly, their confidence improved. See, the fear of literacy was replaced by the usability of reading. And there are three big reasons why that happens. Reading improves empathy. Reading gives us life-changing perspectives. They teach us how to handle our emotions. And we could all do a better job of handling our emotions. <laughs> reading encourages life goals. Some of our favorite books are about people overcoming obstacles. And we pull from those stories to make decisions in our own lives. Reading connects us. Stories about characters are some of the best conversations we will ever have. And it gets better. A person that possesses empathy, ambition, and feels included is two times more likely to contribute to her community, to volunteer, exercise her civic duty, to be employed, to be a better citizen and a better friend. Business and industry helps itself when it helps individuals to become readers. A 1% increase in the literacy rate will generate 18 billion in economic growth each year. A person that reads made up stories is three times more likely to climb the employment ladder. We dream bigger. And these are all people we can benefit from having around. See, reading is a core of day-to-day -day function. We are nothing without it. We read our favorite chocolate bar wrapper, or the prescription bottle, or the newspaper. <laughs> we read everything. When we are young, we learn to read. But when we are older, we must read to never stop learning. So the idea is simple. I challenge you to read more for yourselves, for your families, for your friends, for your jobs. For that stranger that may see you reading and read in turn. I encourage you to pass on the power of reading to at least one person, even if that person is yourself. If you're a reader, share it. If you're not a reader, try it. It's an invaluable tool, and its impact is immeasurable. We don't need more literate citizens. We need more readers. Thank you.